This project is supported by Paperstone and Rockler Woodworking. So I'm very excited about this outdoor kitchen project. I've been wanting to do this for a while now, and I took somewhat of a simplistic approach. Uh, I built this frame out of just basic two by fours and post, and just put it together with pocket holes and screws, not a big deal. And so I need to secure this to the brick wall. And the way I went about doing that is I drilled an oversized hole with a Forstner bit. And then I went back and drilled a hole in the center of that with a spade bit. And then drilled a hole into the brick with a hammer drill. And this will allow me to install what is called a wedge anchor. Now you put on the washer and then the nut and you just hammer this into place. That sleeve on the back of this as you're tightening this up will flare out and create a wedge and so this is really secure it's not going anywhere and it's almost impossible to get these things off the wall if you ever want to take this down you just, just about have to cut them off to get rid of them now i also wanted to add some uh, function and dress this thing up a little bit on the outside now this is going to be a shelf inside the cabinets and it's mounted kind of high because my main goal here was to give me plenty of room below that shelf to store my propane tanks and so that's the uh, goal there. And on the sides of these, I wanted to add some one by sixes. And I'm just, I just cut these to length and just brad nailing them into place. And I'll go back and stain and finish these the same as the post. Okay, so the next step in the project is to make the doors. And this was actually a fun process. Uh, but before I can get started, I needed to install a sacrificial fence to my table saw and I've already got uh, a dado blade installed here and so I'm gonna I'm gonna raise this dado blade up into the fence and also at the pro, at, at the appropriate height and what this is gonna allow me to do is to cut all the way to the edge of these two by fours uh, that would eventually be the rails and styles of the door now I'm cutting rabbits into uh, each of the rails for each door and this is going to allow the panel to sit flush with the back of the door and, and then each rail and each style will both get a half lap joint cut into them and i'm using a crosscut sled here and i've got a a block on my fence uh, as a reference mark and then make my first pass and then i just need to uh, chew away the rest of the material creating those half lap joints and then once I have all those cut I can just kind of put these together and I put these together the best I can uh, and check for squareness and then I'm just going to tack it together with brad nails so I can move it around if I need to but you can see those uh, one by sixes which is creating the panel they're resting in those rabbits and now I can secure those uh, into place and I'll go back to the half lap joints and install screws and this is just a really easy way to assemble a door but it's also a strong door and as you can see it turned out great with a recessed front and flush back i'm very pleased with how they turned out now i can just attach the hinges uh, to the door and then once i have the hinges attached to the door i can mount those to the post and then that's it for the doors now i have to go back and add the pulls later but for the most part i've got a working door All right, so this is the part of the project where I guess my, my vision is just coming to life uh, from the drawings and SketchUp and just what I had imagined. Uh, it's, it's looking just like what I wanted it to. Uh, but this countertop is made by Paperstone, which is one of the supporters of this project. Uh, but what's really cool is that this countertop is made from recycled paper. Yes, recycled paper. It's layered with resin, so it creates this stone-like material. But what's cool is that I'm cutting this with just regular woodworking tools. So I'm cutting it here to width um, with a circular saw. I've got a good blade on there. Didn't have any trouble cutting this. Uh, and so it's just really easy to work with. It's also made right here in the USA and it's incredibly durable. And, and I am using this outside, but it's covered. Uh, so that's kind of cool that I can use it outside in a covered area. But check out Paperstone uh, using the link down in the description. They're a really cool company uh, with a lot of cool products. Uh, and just tell them I sent you. I'd love for you to check them out. I was super happy with how the edge looked after cutting it to width. Um, you know, I didn't have to do anything as far as sanding. It was a pretty, pretty smooth finish. Um, 
And I also decided to cut off the corners to provide some visual interest and to be able to access the light switches and plugs that I installed for lighting. Here I'm marking where to cut out for the sink. I left a little extra material on the corners uh, so I got the chance to use my shop made radius templates. If you missed that video I'll link it in the description. And so now I can just take a jigsaw and follow the line all the way around and cut out the hole for the sink. Pretty easy task there. Now as far as finishing the countertop uh, I opted to sand it first which is not necessary. Um, I just wanted to sand it with a high grit uh, just to give it a nice even clean surface before I applied any finish to this. Uh, and I could have left it just like this. Uh, I opted for the matte countertop and so I wanted to just see if I could add a little bit of shine to it and so I'm using a wipe on poly here. I think I added about three coats and then once it dries it looks really really good. I love a matte finish. Uh, but with these coats of poly, it kind of gives it um, that subtle shine, which is really what I was after. And so you can tell it cleans up the, the edges really nice. And so I just couldn't ask for a, a more beautiful countertop to, to go with this whole setup. So I'm really happy with it. Now dropping in the sink, I just applied some caulk uh, to the edges, dropped in the sink, attached it from the bottom. Um, pretty self-explanatory uh, and then hooked up the faucet to the water spigot on the wall and that was that. Rockler is also a supporter of this project and they also support what I do uh, as I used several of their products in this project like this jig, the pulls are actually, actually from Rockler, the crosscut sled that I use so just want to say thanks to Rockler for just being awesome. There's a link down in the description uh, to Rockler, so be sure and go check them out. They have a ton of woodworking products, uh, so do yourself a favor and give them a visit. So here is the completed project, and I am just in love with how well this project came together with the countertop and the cabinets to the floating shelves, which is the next video to be released, so be sure to be subscribed. And also check out the website article where I go more in detail and cover things like the awning that I didn't mention here in this video. So I, I just I really can't put words into how I feel about how this project came together. I'm looking forward to being able to uh, enjoy this and uh, share it with others and, and just really have a place to entertain outside. So if you are not subscribed, please subscribe, check out the website article, and as always, Thank you for watching.